Today on Public Eye News, hikers reported overdue have been found in the McCormick Wilderness area. And later, a recent Israeli airstrike is reported to have killed at least 18 people and severely burned many others. Our very own Reed Hall has a look into the weather forecast for the next couple days and later a weekend sports recap to start your week. I'm Bianca Kroll. And I'm Luke Middle, and this is Public Eye News. The Marquette County Search and Rescue Team found two hikers at approximately 2.40 this morning in the McCormick Wilderness area. The hikers were on the North Country Trail before they came to their last known location before going missing south of Lake Raymond. Members of the rescue team with canines found the pair just a few miles from their last known location. The hikers denied medical treatment by the rescue team and were transported out of the woods by personnel. As the weather is cooling down, make sure to leave a note with a trusted individual detailing where you are and how long you will be gone and make sure to pack accordingly. And the Marinette County Sheriff's Office received a report Sunday night of a two-vehicle crash that killed one man. Kent Klemke, 58, was traveling on Parkway Road when the vehicle he was operating struck an oncoming RV traveling south. The driver of the RV, Mary Welch, was transported for further assessment, as were other passengers from both vehicles involved in the crash. Speed and failure to maintain control of the vehicle were two of the potential factors in the crash, as the incident remains under investigation by the Sheriff's Office, Wisconsin State Patrol, and the Mar Marinette County Medical Examiner's Office. A Massachusetts pharmacist is set to face seven and a half to 15 years in prison for the 2012 national meningitis outbreak. Glenn Chin, 56, pleaded no contest in August to involuntary manslaughter in the Michigan deaths related to the meningitis outbreak. Chin supervised the production in New England Compounding Center in Farmingham, Massachusetts that shipped out steroids for pain relief to clinics. When investigators saw the lab, they said it had mold and insects inside. 700 people in 20 states were affected by the fungal meningitis and other illnesses, according to the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Michigan is the only state that has prosecuted Chen and his boss, Barry Caden, for the related deaths. Caden commanded Chin to send out untested medication. Chin's sentence will also be served in federal prison and get more than six and a half years. October marks the 15th anniversary of National Farm to School Month. This is celebrating the Michigan Department of Education's Farm to School program and benefiting children across the state. Dr. Michael F. Rice, state superintendent, said he appreciates the strong bond with Michigan's farming communities and schools to add local produce to school lunches. Rice also said this is helping students grow physically and academically to make them better learners. Dr. Kevin Frank, Senior Director of Culinary Services for Detroit Public Schools, said that over 30,000 pounds of produce had come from the farm alone. 269 guarantees across the 66 counties use this program. The program also aims to reimburse the cost of transportation and labor associated with local purchasing. And the DTE is warning customers to be aware of fake employees after a fatal home invasion in Rochester Hills. Two men pretended to be employees in order to gain access to the home. WWJ reporter Heath Clapp has more. Oakland County authorities saying that the one suspect that was arrested from this case was located today in Louisiana. The sheriff's office confirmed Saturday evening that a Hispanic male shown in home surveillance footage was in custody in Shreveport, Louisiana. On Friday, police received a call sometime after noon about a home invasion in the 3700 block of Newcastle Drive in Rochester Hills. Oakland County Sheriff Mike Bouchard says a preliminary investigation revealed that two suspects went to the home, claiming to be DTE workers and needed access to the home for a gas leak. Bouchard says the male victim took the individuals to the basement, where the victim's wife didn't see the husband again. The suspects came up a short time later and restrained the wife, duct taped her, and then for about 20 minutes searched the house and then left. Now it's unclear what the suspects were after, but we do know the deceased victim was a local business owner and police are still searching for a second suspect in this case. DTE released the following statement on Friday, quote, if anyone arrives at your home or business claiming they are from DTE, please ask to see a badge with a photo ID. If the person refuses to show their badge, do not allow them entry into your home. And if the person becomes agitated or acts in a strange manner, call 911 immediately. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office is now asking the public for any information or tips they have on the second suspect. For now in Pontiac, I'm Heath Kalb, CBS News Detroit. Now don't touch that dial. After this short break, we'll be right back with your weather and national news. No world is truly unchanging. This is nature at its absolute finest. 
our daughter. She's gone missing. I should leave this alone. But you won't. He's doing things no one had ever done before, and that is astounding. It's absolutely mind-boggling. Welcome back. I'm Reed Hall here to take you through our public eye news weather forecast. Taking a look behind me at the Academic Mall. Pretty gloomy and cloudy day out there. A little chilly. Some rain in the forecast as well. Taking a look around the UP. A pretty cloudy day around the UP. Starting in Houghton, it's 48 degrees. In Ironwood, it's 40 with a little bit of rain. Down in Iron Mountain, it is 48 degrees. And in Menominee, it is 47. If we take a look towards the east side of the UP, a little bit of sun still peeking out over there. Down in Escanaba, it's 48. In Manistique, it's 47. And up in the Sioux, it is 48 degrees. Back here in Marquette, it's 47 and cloudy. Taking a closer look at our current conditions, the winds are out of the northeast at 15 miles an hour. And our barometric pressure is 30.19 inches and rising. Taking a look towards tonight, it will remain cloudy with a low of 39. Winds out of the north, northeast at 17 miles an hour. And our moon phase is a waxing gibbous. Taking a look at tomorrow, the clouds will stay. It will be a high of 45, a low of 36, and winds will be out of the north at 20 miles an hour. Taking a look ahead towards the end of the week, on Wednesday it's going to be a high of 59, partly cloudy with a low of 39. On Thursday a high of 63 with sun and a low of 46. And on Friday a high of 66 with more sun and a low of 49. That's all the weather I have for the day. Back to the news desk. Thanks for that weather update, Reed. Glad to see the sun is starting to peak out after this week. Taking a look more into our national news, an Israeli airstrike that hit an apartment building in northern Lebanon killed at least 21 people and injured 61 more, according to the Lebanese Red Cross. The attack comes just a day after a Hezbollah drone attack on an army base in northern Israel killed four soldiers and injured seven more. The drone strike was the deadliest campaign launched by Hezbollah since Israel launched a ground invasion of Lebanon two weeks ago. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited the base, saying, quote, we will continue to strike Hezbollah without compassion in every part of Lebanon, end quote. Since last October, around 2,300 people have been killed by Israeli airstrikes in Lebanon alone, with over 75% of those deaths occurring in the last month. And China has deployed a record 125 aircraft in a military exercise surrounding Taiwan, simulating blocking off key ports on the island. The exercise comes as China is to punish Taiwan for rejecting Beijing's claim of sobriety over the self-governed island. In a statement, the China-Taiwan Affairs Office stated, quote, This is a resolute punishment for Lei ching tes continuous fabrication of Taiwan independence nonsense, end quote. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning stated in a daily briefing that China did not consider relations with Taiwan a diplomatic issue. Taiwan was a former Japanese colony before unifying with China at the end of World War II before choosing to split in 1949. And a Las Vegas man was recently arrested at a Trump rally in Coachella, California. He allegedly attempted to bring multiple firearms, including a high-capacity magazine, through a security checkpoint. KCAL reporter Lauren Posen has more. We spoke with the man deputies arrested, Vem Miller, and he says they've got it all wrong. He's got the evidence and that the sheriff's department here has made a big mistake. Now, the sheriff says that Miller told his deputies that he was a journalist and he had credentials to go to the rally. So they led him through the first perimeter. But it was at that second perimeter that another deputy noticed something off about his car. I truly do believe that we prevented a, another assassination attempt. Riverside County Sheriff Chad Bianco speaking on the arrest of 49-year-old Vem Miller outside former President Trump's Coachella rally Saturday. But despite his statement, tonight a federal law enforcement source telling CBS News there is no indication of an assassination attempt connected to this incident. Bianco says deputies noticed something off about Miller's vehicle at a checkpoint outside the event. The vehicle had a uh, an obviously fake license plate, and that prompted further investigation from our deputy. When the deputy searched the car, Bianco says the deputy found a handgun, shotgun, a high-capacity magazine, and other concerning items. The deputy eventually found multiple passports with multiple names, multiple driver's license with different names. The vehicle was unregistered. And the license plate was what we in law enforcement would recognize as one that is homemade and indicative of a group of individuals that claim to be sovereign citizens. Deputies arrested Miller for misdemeanor possession of illegal firearms. 
A retired military law enforcement officer we spoke with says the deputy's instincts were spot on. He says he's trained law enforcement on what to look for. They spotted the license plate right off. They looked at the ID. They saw the disarray. Uh, these are all classic signs of uh, uh, someone out there kind of with sovereign system beliefs, sort of on the fringe. Uh, and I'm sure whatever he said, uh, there's a number of triggers in the language. The Secret Service and FBI are also investigating. In a statement, the Department of Justice said the U.S. Secret Service assesses that the incident did not impact protective operations and former President Trump was not in any danger. While no federal arrest has been made at this time, the investigation is ongoing. Bianco says Miller never made it inside the rally or even close to where the former president was going to be. It was our intent to make sure that there was an outside perimeter and an inside perimeter that no one that did not belong there that intended to do him harm or anyone else harm would be allowed inside that event. And we did exactly what we had hoped for. Miller will be in court January 2nd for the charges he's facing. Reporting in Riverside County, Lauren Posen, KCAL News. And we'll be right back after this short break. Stay tuned. Our world is transforming before our very eyes, and we need to be ready. So join me in the lab and in the field to discover the latest science about our changing weather and climate and how a better future is within reach. Join me for weather. Watch now with Passport on the PBS Video app. Welcome back, and I'm here again this time to walk you through our sports breakdown. Kicking, kicking things off in the NFL, where the Detroit Lions took care of business yesterday, blowing out the Dallas Cowboys 47-9. Yesterday's win marked the first for the Lions against the Cowboys since 2013 and was the worst home loss for the Cowboys since 1988. The entire offense was clicking in this one as Jared Goff threw for 315 yards and three touchdowns, while the ground attack added 184 yards of their own. Brian Branch led the way on the defensive side of the ball, forcing a fumble, picking off Dak Prescott twice, and tying the team lead for tackles. It wasn't all smiles in this one, sadly, as Lions star Aiden Hutchinson suffered a broken fibula. He is expected to make a full recovery after undergoing surgery last night, but will miss the remainder of the season. And back here on campus where the men's basketball team fell short to Michigan State in an exhibition game Sunday, losing 70-53. In a truly special game to honor former Wildcat and current MSU head coach Tom Izzo, over 11,000 people packed the Superior Dome for this one. The Wildcats put up a good fight against the Spartans, bringing hope to what could be a promising season for the green and gold. The Cats showcased their defensive prowess in this one, holding the Spartans to just a 43% shooting clip. The Cats, while undersized, held their own on the offensive boards, hauling an 8 to Michigan State's 9, and led in the steal and turnover departments. Jackson Dudek was the highlight of the afternoon, coming off the bench to score 14 points to lead all scores. The Wildcats will kick their season off November 8th against Maryville. And the NMU men's hockey team kicked off their season this past weekend, playing visitor to 12th-ranked Colorado College. The Wildcats lost a thriller on Friday, falling 4-3 in overtime. Goalie Ryan Roulette was the highlight in this one, making 45 saves. Offensively, Matthew Romer found the back of the net twice, scoring his second to tie the game with less than a minute to go in regulation. The Cats found even less success on Saturday, suffering a 6-1 blowout loss to move to 0-2 on the season. Colorado outshot the Cats 36-12, scoring two in the first, one in the second, and three more in the third. The Wildcats' lone goal came from Ryan Duguay in the first period, the first of his career. The Cats will be back in action this Friday for their home opener against Alaska Anchorage. That's all the sports I have for the day. Back to the news desk. And with that, we are out of time here today on Public Eye News. I'm Luke Middle. And I'm Bianca Kroll. And we'll see you tomorrow. The preceding program was produced by WNMU-TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, in studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall.